Alright, in this video we're going to talk about the general equation for conic sections and then end with the eccentricity of conic sections. Alright, so here's our general equation for conics. ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. Alright, a, c, d, e, and f are all real numbers. You'll notice that b is missing. b is actually the um, coefficient for x, y, which we're not going to talk about in this particular um, in this particular discussion. Alright, so when we have uh, our general equation, we can rewrite our general equation into standard forms for the parabola, the circle, the ellipse, and the hyperbola. Right? But before we even get started, we're going to have an idea, we'll have an idea what um, uh, the, the conic section uh, might be, right? just by knowing the following information. Alright, so for a parabola, either a or c has to be equal to zero, but not both of them. Everybody understand why? Right? If a was zero, then this would go away. You just have uh, y squared. You'd have x and y squared, and you could rewrite that, and it'd be a parabola that opens right or left. Right? So either a or c, the coefficient of x squared or the coefficient of y squared, has to be zero in order to get a parabola, but not both of them are zero. All right? So for a circle. The coefficients for x squared and the coefficient for y squared have to be the same number, but they both cannot be zero. What would happen if both a and c are zero? Then both of these would go away, and you'd be left with dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero, and that would just be the equation of a line. All right. All right. So for a circle, the coefficient for x squared and the coefficient for y squared have to be the same number. For an ellipse. Uh, the coefficient for x squared and the coefficient for y squared, the a and the c, cannot be the same number, and their product has to be greater than zero. That's what this says. a and c are not the same number, and their product has to be positive. Okay, and then for hyperbola, the product of, of a and c has to be less than zero. And th these last two are down here because, remember, if um, for an ellipse, uh, it was x squared, it was ax squared plus cy squared. Uh, and so the product of those two things would be positive. And then for hyperbola, it was ax squared minus cy squared, right? Because you had to have the minus between the, the x squared and the y squared, uh, or the y squared and the x squared, whichever way it was written. And their product, the a and the c, would be a negative number. You follow me? Okay, so just by looking at an equation, we're going to have an idea what the conic section is supposed to be. Then we're going to do our math on it and write it in its standard form. Now, if it, it may turn out that writing it in its standard form, you're going to get something that's not a true statement, and therefore you wouldn't have that particular conic. Like, for example, x squared plus y squared equals negative 3. Right? If that was your equation that you did, x squared plus y squared equals negative 3. All right, so even though we had the x squared and the y squared, we thought it might be a circle. Uh, it's not, because when you, when you did your math on it, you would have x squared plus y squared equals a negative number, and that just, that just can't happen. All right. <clears throat> but this gives you just a general idea of what's going on before you even start to do anything with your equation. All right. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about with conics is called eccentricity. All right. We're just going to give a brief introduction of eccentricity. Note that the ratio c divided by a is called the eccentricity of the conic, and it's denoted this little e equals c divided by a. Yes, I know. Uh, the notation is poor. This E does not represent the E from the uh, natural logarithms that we talked about a while back. Right? This E is not 2.718, so forth and so on. Right? So uh, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. This is the, this is the notation that we're, we're given, so we're just going to have to make do. This E denotes the eccentricity of our conic section. And it's c divided by a, where c is the distance from the center to a focus, and a is the distance from the center to a vertex. All right, so now by definition, the circle, because the distance from the center to a focus is zero. Remember, there's not, there's not a, a, a focus. We have the center, and then we go out to the circle. Uh, and uh, so by definition, we're just going to say e is zero. That, that's boring. Okay, but that's, that's what we've got at the moment. Then for the parabola, the eccentricity is defined to be e equals 1, just the number 1. So the circle and the parabola, they're the boring of the 4. For the other two, the ellipse and the hyperbola, you'll get uh, varying numbers depending on what your, what your graphs look like. All right, so um, 
for again for the parabola, the eccentricity is one, and that's really because we don't really have a a, a center for the parabola. And that's because it's it's really kind of defined to be the ratio of the distances from your point to a fixed point, the focus, and from your point to your to your fixed line, the directrix. And we all know that from the parabola that those two things are equal. The distance to the focus and the distance to the directrix are the same. I mean, that's the definition of a parabola. And so A and C, so to speak, are the same number, and so E would be equal to 1. Again, circle and parabola, uh, not, not really exciting. All right, so for an ellipse, your eccentricity has to be between 0 and 1. And that's because for an ellipse, remember, uh, 0 is less than C is less than A. Right, C is less than A on uh, on an ellipse. Right, don't forget. You know, if you have an ellipse, right here's the center. Then out to here is A. That distance is A, and to here that distance is C. So the distance from from the center to the focus C is less than the distance from the center to the vertex. Right. So that means then that zero is less than C divided by A, which is less than 1, if you divide everything by A there. And that's where you get E, right? We're just letting E be C divided by A. So E measures the roundness of the ellipse. The closer E is to the number 0, then the more your ellipse looks like a circle. And when E equals 0, it is indeed a circle, right? When E gets closer to 1, right, out there like 0 0.999 or whatever, then you get a very, very flat ellipse. Uh, like for example, the the um, orbit of Earth, uh, the uh, the eccentricity for that ellipse is 0 0.017. It's very very close to being a circle, right? The the eccentricity for the uh, um, orbit of Earth. But uh, contrast that with the eccentricity for the orbit of Halley's Comet. Uh, the eccentricity for Halley's Comet is 0 0.98. That's a really really flat ellipse, All right? Okay, so that's, uh, that's the idea on the ellipse. So then the hyperbola is your eccentricity has to be greater than 1. And everybody f agree for a hyperbola, you, you have, um, let's do a hyperbola real quick. Hyperbola, so from the center to the focus, that would be C, and then the center to the vertex would be A. And so the distance to C is larger than the distance to A. So C is bigger than A, and so eccentricity is greater than 1. The, the closer it is to 1, say like 1.0005 or something like that, um, you get a, a narrow hyperbola. So it would be like narrow hyperbola, so forth, when E is close to 1. And then when you get really large E, then you get these really wide hyperbolas, like such, right? when E is large. So that's why the eccentricity can, can be useful, is if we know the eccentricity, then we have an idea what the shape of the ellipse or the hyperbola uh, is, is looking like. All right, that's all we've got for conics. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.